Hey, hey, this is meteorologist Darren Harv from islesnow.com. October 3rd, 2016, starting this video off at 11.10 a.m. And uh, right here, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the factors that may affect this winter. I had somebody ask, well, how can you be so sure that the fall is going to be mild and December might be in trouble? Um, is it possible that you're wrong? Well, of course it's possible that I'm wrong, but here's the thing. We've been warm for like a year and a half now, and until something comes around to disrupt that, you have to bet on warm until um, until it doesn't happen anymore. And right here, I'm going to take a look at a couple things that might disrupt that. Uh, one of them right here is the um, warm blob of water over the northeastern Pacific Ocean, Gulf of Alaska. It's known as the warm PDO. And uh, what that tends to do is make it warm in the west, cold in the east during the winter. Now, we had that last year too, but it turned out it was pretty much warm everywhere. That's because we had that super strong El Nino, which you can see here is gone now. It's a, a neutral Enso, a weak La Nina. Actually, you can start to see a little bit of warming here near the South American coast. So this is probably pretty close to neutral at this point. And um, that's a that's a big factor going into this winter, I would think. Now, the other factor we like to look at is the Siberian snow cover. And you can see here September 26th, um, really just starting to get its uh, toehold here in Siberia. But then, look, in less than a week, we had this huge explosion of snow cover over Siberia. And uh, the theory is the greater the snow cover extent uh, spreading over Siberia in the fall, the greater chance we have of having a cold and snowy winter. But I must caution you, this is early in the game, and we're going to have to see how this spreads throughout um, Siberia into uh, Eastern Europe as the month goes on. We have to see where this is at by the end of October to make any kind of... Um, any kind of guess as to what it might do to affect our winter. And then you can see on this panel over here this large expanse of blue, which is basically uh, where snow cover spread is ahead of schedule. So uh, the early uh, returns are looking pretty favorable. And what I want to show you here in this panel is why the Siberian snow cover spread uh, is could be important. What happens is that when you have a greater snow cover spread in Siberia in October, that reflects more of the sunlight into the atmosphere, which in turn weakens the stratospheric polar vortex, which in turn create higher pressures near the Arctic. And with those higher pressures, um, that tends to push the cold air into the eastern United States more frequently than if you had a strong stratospheric polar vortex lower pressures near the North Pole, and that just kind of makes the strong westerly flows and bottles up the cold air. So, you know, going back to here, let's see. If you have a strong uh, PDO here through the winter, and you had an instance where you had strong, uh, strong Siberian snow cover spread in, in October, the theory is it would get colder up here quicker. You'd have higher pressures near the pole. You'd have more frequent shots of uh, cold air coming from Siberia up over the pole and down into the eastern United States. And the fact that we have a, uh, a neutral ENSO this winter instead of a strong El Nino, those are the things that I think could disrupt the warm weather pattern. But I got to tell you, I think it's going to take some time. Right here, we're looking at the cl the climate models, and yeah, you know, I want to caution you that these are just model outputs. They're not you have to take kind of take them with a grain of salt, but they give us a rough idea of what may happen. And we're just looking at patterns here, nothing specific. For October here, you see where these lines are packed together straight, and the flow is just from east to west. It's a strong zonal flow. We got the polar vortex up uh, north of the uh, Arctic Circle. And when you get that, you can see it's uh, pretty warm from the Arctic uh, right down into the United States, uh, relative to normal. You're not going to see 80 degree days like we did in early September. But in terms of temperatures relative to normal, October will be a squarely uh, warmer than normal month here. 
And then as we move along into November, you still get a strong uh, fire hose Pacific jet. It seems like the core of it's a little bit more offshore now, but it's still a fairly zonal flow here. Maybe a little bit of troughiness in, in Canada. So I would say November is going to start to uh, cool off somewhat. But you take a look at the temperature anomalies. Uh, still pretty warm in the Arctic here relative to normal and no discernible areas of colder than normal weather. And you can see the polar vortex, the mean position is up by the North Pole. So I don't expect a whole lot of excitement for November. Now as we move along to December, just where things start to get a little bit interesting here. Um, still got a strong Pacific flow, but it's starting to split apart. You have one branch of that going up into uh, British Columbia and the other branch starting to go into the southwestern United States. So that cuts down on the intensity of this of the Pacific flow. Um, the, Pacific, uh, the polar vortex here, you can see that drops from its position up here by uh, the North Pole down to um, uh, just south of the Arctic Circle by December. And uh, this white area looks like a, a kind of a weakness in the flow where where the geopotential heights are a little bit below normal. So this kind of leads me to believe that there will be um, a fairly active path across uh, southern Canada. And that could that could bring some you know warm ups ahead of it. But on the on the wake of these uh, disturbances as they go through, they could trigger some lake effect snows. So December, I think, will be a little bit of an up and down month. And but if you look at the temperature anomalies, uh, still not a lot of cold yet. And I've been monitoring this trend. I think a couple weeks ago, the climate model was showing a very, very warm December, very disheartening. It's kind of backed off on that a little bit over the last several runs, but this still doesn't excite me uh, quite too much for December yet. Now, as we cross into the new year, that's when the fun starts. Um, the polar vortex becomes more vigorous. It looks like it We'll go back to December, compare it. it. looks like the mean position has dropped down a little bit. Uh, this flow is splitting apart. And um, this area of white here indicates a weakness in the geopotential height field, which means some of this energy from the southern uh, branch of the split flow could kind of pool up in the southwestern part of the United States. And what happens with that? is you get these storms that get ejected from the southwest United States and make a run at us. And you know, I, I suspect early on in the month of January, some of these will tend to make the run west of here and bring mixed precipitation events. But as the colder pattern matures into January, uh, I think this track will get suppressed uh, somewhat and you'll start getting some uh, snow events from this. So January has the potential to be a pretty active event, uh, whether we're going to get uh, purely snowstorms or some kind of mixture. Yeah, I, I think it will be an active month, and and um, I think that's what starts to get it going here. I think January marks the transition, and by the temperature anomalies, you can see that cold air starting to build across Canada quite nicely. So... Um, uh, these charts do show a little bit of a, a little bit of a warm anomaly over the eastern United States, but it's not very high. Maybe on the order of like a, a a click above normal, which really isn't that devastating. Again, we're just looking for patterns, and based on what I see here, January could be a pretty active month. Now this drops us into February, which this this just looks like the bomb right here. You have a mature, uh, warm PNA pattern over the western United States. You got this very active storm pattern over southern uh, Canada into the northern United States, and you have the uh, a lot of uh, warmer than normal heights here over Greenland, which indicates your potential uh, Greenland block. So, I mean, that looks pretty fun. I mean, that could be uh, you know everything clicking on all cylinders. And if you look at the temperature anomalies, consistent cold right through Canada and into the northeastern United States. So summing it up, uh, a mild autumn, possible slow start to the winter, getting active and stormy in January, and uh, February we could be rocking and rolling with frequent cold and snow. 
So on that note, I'll just say uh, have a great day, enjoy the fall, and I'll see you next time here.